So uh, let me start by asking you, Ericsson says that by 2020, 40% of India will be covered by 4G. But their projection is also that by 2021, 150 million people will have 5G access. Don't you think India is too far behind in this race? So I don't believe the 150 5G was just India specific. No, it wasn't I thought it was, it was, it was global. It was global, uh, global specific. specific yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I don't think 150 million for global connections is in 5G. Please remember one of the points he made was the difference between 5G, 4G, 3G was that 5G is the first technology to focus on inclusive of persons to things and things to things. So when you talk about 150 million, uh, we are projecting 8 to 10 billion just connections between machine to machine. So 150 million looks like a very achievable number. No, the number looks very achievable, but I'm asking that isn't India too far behind in the race because their projection says that by 2020, 40% of India will have 4G network coverage. So 5G is nowhere to be seen. I mean, why are we even talking about so, 5G yeah, no, right now? I, no, I think what is happening is that when you look at networks, we find that this whole issue of sequential growth is no longer the case. For example, we just all skipped over the whole landline issue mm. we probably skipped over you know satellite and uh, you know uh, cable and everything else and gone directly to mobile and mobile is going to be the flavor of the day going forward so I think what's going to happen is that we are going to find parallel developments and what the good thing is from the technology side it's backward and forward compatible so the network equipment manufacturers are saying, look, you know, it's not a throwaway. 4G is no longer a throwaway. We're going to help you migrate and move, and there will always be that demand. So spectrum per se is going to become agnostic to Gs. Also, you know, one very important question which is on everybody's lips right now is that if the country is facing such a stalemate when it comes to a basic issue such as call drops, uh, are we? is it actually realistic right now to even think of implementing better networks like 5G right now? So I think uh, this whole issue of call drops in the last several months is kind of a blip in the large uh, issue of uh, matters because remember, we had kind of a tsunami of events gathered together. What are they? One, we had our complete network spot frequency changed as a result of the uh, of the auction process right so you have no other country in the world with this type of complexity of network 200 million people on a network live having to change spot frequencies and still not having an issue during the same time period we introduced mobile number portability we also introduced this whole n notion of informing customers about their data consumption all major interventions into the network the sort of wonder is that worse things didn't happen all right so i think yes we acknowledge the fact that there is a blip we're fixing it minister himself acknowledged that things are improving and we think in a couple of months we shall have this thing take uh, sort of licked you know we've also heard a lot of talk about how there is no uh, health risk because of cell towers being put up around residential areas do you stand by that statement there have been a lot of studies done that you know radiation is is uh, in fact a very real threat so uh, just dismissing it completely right now saying that it's not uh, isn't that too premature no i don't I don't think it's premature. I don't think the World Health Organization and the organizations that are tasked, which are the health uh, you know, departments of the various governments, all right, take this thing for granted. Everyone, Sweden, UK, uh, Finland, uh, Europe, all of these departments that are tasked with looking after the health of the citizens, all of them are not going to say, hey, listen, you know, we're just going to ignore it. I think we, on top of that, have one of the most stringent uh, norms. So I think the government has appropriately set the safety norms. Cars have safety norms, uh, you know, all kinds of, uh, you know, pharmaceuticals have safety norms. And so on that basis, I think we're all set to be able to protect the uh, population. I think we have a... Uh, all right. Thank you so much, sir.